Okay, looks like we're live. Awesome. Woo. All right, welcome. Welcome to Command & Conquer Renegade. Let's do Ooh. this. <laughs> so today I'm going to be playing the 100% category. Um, so I want to start by explaining what that means before I actually hit the go button here. So for 100%, there are some things to keep in mind in order to even do a 100% run. First thing, we have to run a commando, which is the hardest difficulty in the game. And it's <laughs> it's hard to emphasize like how much harder the game is on commando versus recruit, which is what's used for like the normal 80% run. Um, so on commando, you have less than half the normal HP you have on any percent. You have to, to get 100%, you also have to complete all the secondary objectives, um, which include, um, oh yeah, secondary objectives. And then also, uh, in this game, there are quick save loads. Uh, you can quick save at any point and load them at any point. However, uh, if you do that, at the end of the mission, you will not get five stars if you have any loads within the same level. So if you die at any point, you have to start the mission from the very beginning to have a valid 100% run, which is just makes it a lot harder because if you if you want to like do a safety save in a normal 80% run, you can do that. But in 100%, you cannot do that. You will not get five stars at the end. Um, is there anything else I'm forgetting? Uh, not in the actual 100% requirements, though I might add that the no saves requirement makes things very difficult. Yes. Um, because the hardest difficulty is no joke in this game. Uh, for context, recruit the category any percent is ran on, you have about 15% of the health that you would have on recruit. Which is a really fun time, except for the the end of it you just yeah. die all the time uh, yeah. as for specific difficulty changes as well as like their own health is that enemies take more hits to, to die they they take they're just bullet sponges compared to any percent um using any percent they drop like supplies they drop health armor ammo in commando they don't do that except for 10 percent of the time any percent it's 100 percent of the time this is like 10 percent instead so there's just so many things fighting against you in commando so anyway I think that summarizes it. Uh, I think yeah. I'm about ready to go, so I'll go ahead and just do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Right, so this first mission is called Scorpion Hunters, and uh, it does not have any secondary objectives, so the route is the same as that in any percent or any other category. Uh, the only added thing is that there's one subtlety we'll see later. Yep. Uh, but as we'll see, both in this uh, run as well as if any of you watch a any percent run, this level is completely RNG and has no skill involved. <laughs> we'll, we'll, um, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So starting off the game, we have this uh, cutscene. A little bit about the plot of the game. Command and Conquer Renegade takes place in the Command and Conquer series, specifically during the plot of the first game, where. The good guys, GDI, those are the yellow guys on your screen there, uh, are fighting the terrorist organization, the Brotherhood of Nod, and they just got ambushed. And you know who they need help from? I think they need help from a commando. And so, yeah, that commando is our player character, Havoc, and we are going to go rescue them from this ambush. Go. Ooh. Sounds like still in trouble, sir. So one of the things I'll be doing throughout the run, doesn't matter so much the first the first level because you get lots of ammo anyway, but I do want to conserve ammo at least during the second mission and onwards. Because yeah, like they... I said before, the ammo drops are very limited. So starting off this section, this section is actually an auto-scroller in disguise. Um, you just have to kill certain um, enemies to make it sure it progresses. Uh, DJ Thed right now is killing those two. The enemy who just died in one hit is the enemy that dies to make sure the mission progresses. Uh, that first part of progression is that our APC just got blown up by that rocket soldier. And then now we will continue doing auto scroller for about a minute and a half here as uh, for both fun as well as to make the RNG a little bit more on our side. Uh, Thed is currently killing these soldiers that as they spawn. Um, Notably, we're going to actually be wanting to watch the rocket 
soldier guy, or or the rocket soldier officer, or as the community calls him, rocket guy, because he's the big determiner of RNG in this level. Um, whether he does a thing or not will save you 10 seconds, which is... He missed. <laughs> he missed. Okay, so his job is to blow up that helicopter. Uh, he kind of just decides whether he wants to hit the shot or not. Um, if he hits the shot, then he then the level progresses faster and if he doesn't hit the shot then you have to do it yourself and it's really slow um but yeah so that is our beloved rocket guy rng I mean, it's about two-thirds of the time he'll miss so now uh the auto scroller has progressed and our tank is going to get repaired no i'm uh, gonna get repaired actually not the tank yeah yep. yeah yeah sorry my bad <laughs> uh instead he's standing in front of the repair animation and will pick up the tank and this oh, is now... Oh, I missed it. Okay, so, uh, Thed was there trying to shoot down the Humvee. Uh, on this difficulty, takes two shots to shoot down, so he was going for a fast lineup on the first shot. Uh, that saves you about two seconds if you kill the Humvee there. Um, because it is currently getting in his way, and will continue to get in his way for the next little bit. Alright, so... That is the only subtlety difference between this level and Commando versus any other difficulty, is the fact that that takes two shots to kill instead of one. Now, he's going to try to go kill these SAM sites. The level's uh, timer to begin ending will end once he has killed these two SAM sites. Uh, the first SAM site, for some reason, I'm not actually sure why, takes way more hits to kill. And then he'll pick up these rocket launchers, uh, which are very helpful for later in the run. As ooh, ammo in this game uh, is maintained throughout your missions with one exception. So, it's the picking up those rocket launchers is going to be very helpful. And now this level will end in about a minute. It is just a matter of waiting. And so, there are various Epic. games that runners play to pass the time here. Uh, I see that DJ is playing his favorite one, yep. which is Kill Your, kill <laughs> your Friend. There's nothing else to do, so I might as well just shoot everyone I see. I'm gonna get penalized for it. Yeah. So that's uh, Scorpion Hunters uh, showing the utmost speedrunning skill. Um, except, yeah, no. <laughs> not the thing. The skill uh, is if the rocket guy hits his shot. That's where the skill the is. The skill is if the rocket guy hits his shot. There are some arcade rituals we all do to try to make sure he hits it. And notice how he gets five stars at this mission end screen. Yep. Uh, that is the important determiner. That is the definition of 100%. So this is Rescue and Retribution. Uh, this is the most heavily contested individual level in all of Renegade. Um, and to start off, you'll notice that uh, DJ is jumping uphill. Um, it is slightly faster. Uh when you as long as the hill isn't too steep as well as you'll see him downhill also jump downhill that is always faster so he'll progress through this ladder and uh kane is in this game uh to answer a question in this chat you do see him and meet him and he says your progress is very slow very offensive um, i don't like that he's saying i'm slow yeah he does tell he does call you slow in the very last level of this game actually so dj just killed his two enemies who spawned this health upgrade this is increases your health by four points for the permanently for the rest of the game, which is very helpful because our health is very low. And uh, I have a very important question for you, DJ. Yeah. Have you found Captain Duncan yet? I think he went down the path behind the construction. <laughs> I think I found him right here, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, say hi to Duncan, everybody. Chat, that, that means you say hi, Duncan. Duncan's really nice. He's going to help us save a lot of time. And on this category, he's actually required to see him because he's an, it's a secondary objective to meet him. Um, so he just gave us a super weapon because he's really nice. Um, so next up, there's going to be a secondary, two secondary objectives here. One is to kill those turrets, which DJ will just use his rocket launcher for. Um, and then on the tower he just walked by, there is an officer he's supposed to kill. He's going to line it up with his rocket launcher. And he gets it, and that is um, that is the objective, to just kill that officer. And now he's going to blow up this truck to pick up the C4, which will be helpful for a strat uh, later on. And then notice how he is using his pistol to conserve ammo. Um, because his pistol has infinite ammo, whereas the rest of the guns do not. Alright, so... This is a developer intended shortcut in the level where instead of progressing through an area with a bunch of enemy tanks, we're going to walk behind the path and then walk down the river. Um, and then we are going to go uh, save some men of the cloth. Um, there are civilians in a nearby 
Oh, I just noticed. Yeah, I already missed wait. my second objective. You did so not I, get officer. I got, I shot at the officer, but he didn't die, so I'm gonna have to go back for it. Already off to a little rough start. So I, I looked and confirmed if he was down. He was down. I thought he wasn't visible when I shot it. So I'm actually gonna go back while this objective completes. I already cleared through my had to, so I'll just go back. Which mm -hmm. yes, uh... coming back is gonna be sketchy though. I have to though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I can't go so... back the river way because that's a one-way path. I jumped down to get there, so I have to go this way. Yeah. Careful for the rocket missile in the tank. Yeah. But... Yeah. Um. All right. So this is a reneg. This is a property of the 100% speed run. He missed an objective. He he did went for, go for it, but the uh, officer decided to be uh, not he, nice to him. Yeah. Just dodged my shot. Uh, it's a bit of a minute detour, but it's fine. This can happen a lot um, with other things. Like uh, yesterday, I had a very fast. 100% run, that would have been record. But it turns out there was one objective that I missed, even though I shot at it, I missed because there was a SAM site, it's a turret that shoots at air vehicles, and it, there's an animation where it rotates. And when I shot at it, it was on target, but then it rotated away from the shot, and I didn't notice, and it missed. Um, something similar must have happened with this not officer, where his animation might have just dodged a rocket. This is the fastest way to kill him, is just chuck a rocket at this guy. Yeah, he took some damage. Yeah, there you go. Now I saw him drop. Yeah, so it, he, he got splashed by it. Yeah, I also died. He's fine. Um, so, so now we are going to continue again back upon the intended route, just a little bit slower, uh, in the sense that we had to go do this backtrack. Yep. But luckily this level isn't too important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Rescue and Retribution is very much... Oh yeah, I can still get world record, if, if, even with that yeah. in mind. Like, I've lost multiple minutes, even, um, my current record, that is still valid. Um... So it could very well happen in this run. Yeah, because this category is so error prone, both in the fact that you can miss objectives and the fact that this difficulty is really hard. Yeah, and if you I die, you have to start the level from the very beginning. So yeah. that in of itself is a ton of time. Every mistake is just huge time loss, and unless you feel like resetting until uh, you get fired from your job for spending all your time speedrunning and not... Uh, <laughs> True. Um, um, unless that happens, then you uh, really this 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 is very much a an error prone category that is far from optimized. Uh, so coming up here, uh, this hill is a little bit scary on this difficulty because there are a lot of enemies. Um, DJ has their spawn points fairly memorized, so it's mostly fine. Um, but yes, okay. So now he kills that officer. Uh, he was about to do the any percent route, but then remembered you had to do a thing I actually wanted to kill the officer before I dropped, so that was the main reason. Oh, okay. That's what I usually do. It is, uh, uh, on a, uh, like I, like we, uh, said in the beginning with the, um, difficulty. Uh, a requirement of 100% is you are not allowed to load saves within the level. It is just a, because this is a 100% speedrun, it is literally just a requirement of 100%. Um, which makes this... Because the Westwood developers thought you would uh, not be a fan. You didn't have a life, so... Okay, so he's gonna blow up this Master Control Terminal. In Renegade, every building has a Master Control Terminal, which is basically just its center point that you can blow up to kill the building. He's gonna pick up these health and armor upgrades that increase his health and armor permanently by 4 points each for the rest of the game. Which is very helpful on a run where you have very little health and armor. Uh, for what's worth in this game, health and armor function basically identically. Um, the only exception is that health is what you take when you take fall damage, uh, you don't take armor damage. But everything else, they are exactly equal. Alright, so coming up here, uh, Duncan is gonna- this is where our good friend Duncan gave us a super weapon. Um, there's two ways to complete this objective in the game. You can either go inside that building there, the communication center, to go to a terminal, or you can blow it up. Um, However, blowing up from the outside with small arms isn't really practical, so you know what you can do instead? Uh, you can plant this super weapon beacon, and we are going to laser it from space. So, uh, as that happens, he's just going to make sure he's clearing out the enemies around it so he doesn't die. And then the level will add, he will get the ability to press this button once the center explodes. 
and then once he presses that button, the level will play cutscene, and then he stops rescuing Retribution. <sighs> yeah, I only lost like two minutes here, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal, just a two minute time loss of the 100%. Um, yeah. no one in chat ask what my 100% PB is. <laughs> oh yeah, it's spectacular. <laughs> it's a really spectacular... I'm... For, for, for context, I'm the only one that's been running this category for the past, like, year, so... Yeah, I, I tried it once and said, no, too hard for me. I'll stick with any percent and every other category in this game, but not, not 100% this category is too... is too much. A little low on rockets here, so I'm going to pick up as much of the ammo as I can. Even if it slows me down a little bit. Yeah. So he's gonna get this hubby. Uh, there's these three rocket pickups ahead of you. Normally, you might want to only pick up one or two, uh, but he's gonna take the time to pick up all three because ammo conservation with ammo sticking between levels and enemy drops only being 10% makes ammo ammo just such a big deal in this run that you have to take your opportunities. So now there's this is armored assault. Uh, this level is mostly a vehicle level. Um, and it has the most secondaries, I believe, of any level in the game. I, I believe I'm correct about that. Ah, uh, yes, that is true. Alright, so this level, uh, secondary number one is to kill that helicopter pad that he is shooting. Secondary number two is to clear the area and then walk into the tower. Uh, that triggers a little bit finicky, but he gets it first try. If you try to trigger it too soon, it will just say you have failed the- or not failed, but that can- won't accept objective because you try to walk in too soon after you kill all the enemies so you have to try to try again if that happens yeah so now upcoming we're gonna have uh another couple secondaries this time the secondaries will be to uh clear these houses uh which is the same as clearing the tower you just have to kill the enemies around you and then uh enter them once they're clear with the trigger having the same finickiness um, he's pretty safe in his vehicle, uh, on this difficulty, vehicles are basically the only thing that aren't really nerfed compared to other difficulties. Uh, their health doesn't change, and their damage stays about the same, um, which is just really high. I'm not sure if they actually mathematically change or not. As far as I am aware, they don't feel that much different compared to any percent. They don't really feel different. Yeah. Alright, so he's gonna clear that house, and then clear the next house and then he's going to if you notice that car behind the building that is a buggy that is the uh, the nod the enemy faction equivalent of the humvee the humvee is uh the the buggy is less health um but is faster so he's gonna grab it because it just drives faster and then we're going to get into this next section where we have some more houses to clear because the mission is really kind of make us do that however there's also another secondary objective which is to acquire this tank this mammoth tank, which is um, a really heavy-duty tank, but it's also really slow. Um, so he's going to just use it to kill the tanks in front of him, and then he is going to swap it out back for his buddy. Um, oh no! What killed you there? Okay, this requires some explanation. If anyone is familiar with Renegade, like classic stock, bone stock patch Renegade, there's a bug that happens that's called Blue Hell. Wait, you got blue held there? Yeah. Um, that's not the first time that's happened to me there either. Um, I should have been more careful. Oh. But, yeah. It's so, that, 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 that happens because of a collision bug. If, if two dynamic objects collide in a very specific way that I don't even think I can really explain or even understand, um, you just get launched into the stratosphere, and sometimes, if you get launched downwards, you hit the like bottom kill plane and you just die instantly. Um, that's what happened there. I got launched down into the yeah, plane. Yeah, that's instantly. a 1 in 1,000 bug. That's happened to me, like, twice ever. Um, it's, it's so rare. You have to hit the vehicle. So the buggy, the enemy vehicle that was coming behind him, crashed at him at the most precise possible angle to make the collision bug out and insta-kill him through the... Through, it just, it sends you at, like, a billion speed in a random direction. Um, and in this case, it sent him downwards and it clipped through the, the floor into the yeah. area that's insane um which is really unlucky okay so he's just going to do the exact same part of this level again in fact he actually has a little bit of a cleaner tower this time um but doesn't make up for the fact that he just lost a bunch of time to 
random nonsense. Um, yeah, that's... I don't keep that in mind enough. I should, because it's not the first time that happened to me there. And it's because the buggy ran into my mammoth tank from back to behind in a very specific way. It's hard to explain why it happens. And in the community patches that's been released since then for like online multiplayer and such, it's been fixed. But in the bone stock patches, what we use for the speed run, that it's just something to be aware of. So yeah, and importantly, because this is 100%, you saw him he pressed the level restart button did not load a save yep. uh, because wonderful category um so yeah notice how he's actually so he prioritized killing there the not officer the not officer is the guy with the beret and the chain gun oh, yeah, as opposed yeah. to these normal grunts with their rifles uh officers call in reinforcements through both helicopters and planes um so to actually clear the area you have to make sure you to this that is the example of the trigger being finically finicky yep. like we talked about went into it too um, soon took a a little bit of a second to make it process that every enemy was dead around him um but yeah killing the officer makes it so no reinforcements can be ca called in um and that is what leads us to having uh, yeah that's what leads us to actually being able to secure it uh so now we're gonna go back at the same spot so we have the buggy and we're going to pick up the Mammoth tank in order to kill the enemy tanks and the enemy buggy and not get blue held this time. Um, uh, now the tank's stuck. What? I'm, oh, now it's even. Weird. I know the tank doesn't isn't able to move for a brief period, but that was the longest I've ever seen it happen. Weird. Yeah, there's a bug, I think, there with, like, the control and if you buffer an input or something. I don't know um, what's going on there. So yeah, he kills the tanks, he kills the the, bu the enemy buggy before it ends up colliding with him uh, for the, the safety. And now he's going to pick up his buggy again, which has both the anti-infantry gun, uh, which is actually going to be a little bit easier to kill the enemies with. And he's going to kill the officer inside this house so that no more reinforcements get called in. Uh, of course, there's just this one more batch uh, through that helicopter, as well as these ones from paratrooped in. And that helicopter. Unlucky time. Um... Yeah, he gets these kills in, and then now he's going to walk into the door to hit the trigger, uh, and progress the, the mission. Uh, notice there that he turned instantly in 180 degrees, running it has a instant 180 button. I'm not sure what that has it bound to, I'm guessing, the default It's X. the default, it's default yeah. X. Yeah. Alright. So this next section uh, is, we're gonna take our buggy and we're gonna fly it into the face of a bunch of dudes with rocket launchers and tanks. Uh, I'm not actually sure the current state of the art 100% route here. Okay, that's what I would have guessed. So you'll pull out a sniper rifle, kill those two rocket soldiers who are in the towers before he progresses. Uh, there are two secondary objectives in this area. He has to kill that convoy of trucks. And yep. then there's a SAM site, uh, a turret that shoots aircraft just over this ridge that he also has to kill. So he's going to kill those trucks from a distance with a buggy gun. And there's and going I to use be... um, my rocket launcher to kill the tank because it's the safest way to do it. I don't want to lose my buggy here yet. So, uh, being a, a, a great, fun head peeker with the tank. Yep. Yeah. Probably should have brought my buggy a little bit closer, but it's fine. Yeah. Come back in. Now I can just keep going. Yeah. Alright, so uh, then he kills the SAM site, which gives him the objective, and he's going to kill this truck. All of those will drop a little bit of ammo. Um, and he's going to progress through to this next section where, uh, surprise, surprise, we have another building to secure. This time we don't actually enter it, though. Uh, there's no interior. Um, so first things first, he is going to fight this buggy, you know, 1v1. Um, however, he uh, this 1v1 is a lot easier for Fed because as he was doing, uh, he was doing a trick there that's prevalent through all of Renegade um, where you can animation cancel. Um, your vehicle shot with a rocket launcher shot by quickly getting out of the vehicle, uh, having your rocket launcher equipped when you get in the vehicle so that it pulls out when you get out, and then shooting your rocket and then getting out again. Um, that is a very important technique in all of, in every category of the Renegade speedrun except for teleport in front. Um, and so yeah, he did that with there with the buggy, he was animation canceling the buggy shots with his rocket launcher shots to kill the enemy buggy faster, uh, as well as get rocket shots in. So now he's going to switch out um, his buggy for this tank here because this tank's a little bit more versatile after he's clearing this out. There's going to be a tank around this corner that, oh look, it's the animation cancel that we were just discussing. 
Um, Very useful. That's right. It's it's incredibly useful in this in this speed run. Um, and then he's gonna clear out the Sam site, which is another secondary objective. It should be noted actually that in uh, Renegade, there are three types of objectives: uh, primary, secondary, tertiary. Primary are the ones that in theory you need to complete for the level to finish. Uh, secondary are the ones we've been discussing this whole time, and tertiary is kind of there. Um, this category, despite being called 100%, it used the game's definition of 100%, which only requires secondaries. So if you have a speedrun trick that skips primaries, I'm definitely not mentioning this for any reason, but we'll come <laughs> back to it later, um, then skipping primaries, then that counts, and we don't do second tertiaries because they don't matter. Uh, we only do tertiaries if they just like are on the, along the way and they're genuinely helpful, which we'll see at least once. Um, but yeah, this is a bridge section. There are a couple of rocket dudes there. Uh, rocket dudes and renegade, but especially on this difficulty, are terrifying. I must emphasize. Mm. So, rocket launchers are capable of headshotting you in this game, and that means that a rocket launcher headshot will always one-shot you on this difficulty. In addition to that, they're pretty much the like. Look at these two grunts shooting their two puny rifles at DJ's tank. Look how ineffective that is. Like. It's all about the rockets to kill tanks. Um, so he clears out these two more secondary objectives here, uh, these two sand fights. And then we are going to progress on to Dam, the next big part of this level, uh, which if you plan on watching Renegade 8 percent later in this uh, marathon, uh, savor Dam right now because trust me, you're not going to see it in any percent. <laughs> yeah, this is not the first time you've seen me be seeing Renegade. Um, or not, not the last time you've seen, right, right, seen Renegade in this uh, marathon. Nodal's going to be running that two days from now, about 48 hours from now, he'll be doing 90%, which is a lot more fast-paced and more YOLO-like, while in 100%, uh, it's very, very safe compared to that. More, fl more fun glitchy tricks, uh, less FPS. Yep. Um, so yeah, DJ is going to head down into the dam now. His first objective is to blow up the dam. Remember how we said each building has a master control terminal? He's going to blow that up. Uh, it's the central point of the building. He's going to use Renegade's third-person mode to be a dirty cheater and see the enemies around the corner before they see him, so that he he was on rather low health there. It was kind of scary. So now he's going to C4 this. He's going to he's going to C4 this, and he just blew the dam. So that is the actual objective to progress the mission. But now he has to do some secondaries um, because there is a big tower of laser light that will shoot him and kill him in front of the place where he wants to go to progress, even if he did want to continue uh, without doing the secondary. Um, however, it has a weakness. It can be Its power can be turned off, and that's actually the secondary is to go turn off its power by killing the power plant. Did you end up learning the nuke lineup for this, by the way? Uh, it doesn't work on this mission. Because the, oh. you have to kill the engineer at the, uh, the Master Control Terminal, or you oh. can even... Okay. Kill the power plant, and I, I've tried. You can't kill the engineer. I don't even know if he spawned in until you get there. So, cool. That lineup might only be useful on teleport. Or something. Uh, that's just discussion about a, a glitch that was found to help you kill the power plant faster. That doesn't actually work on this mission uh, because there is an engineer who repairs it as you're trying to kill it, and you need to kill that engineer. But you can't kill. That He's actually not repairing it. He, it, it. For this mission specifically, he blocks all damage to the power plant for as long as he's alive. Like, he, the power wow. plant cannot get damaged. So even if, if you place a C4 on the master control, master control terminal as he's still alive, he will prevent it from dying, even if he dies to the C4 along with it, so. Oh, wow, I didn't yeah. even know that. So oh. like, what I'm gonna do is, once I get to that room, I'm gonna kill the engineer, place the C4 on it, and wait before I blow it up, because even if you blow it up after he dies, he can still not die. You have to wait a bit. Yeah. All right, so, so he's gonna head down and place it. Room. But I'm not gonna blow it up immediately because it might not blow up. <laughs> Wait until I reload, then I switch, then I blow it up. That's enough havoc. Good work. There we go. Yeah, I didn't even know that he just made it invincible. That's a little bit of yeah. It's <laughs> it varies based on the mission of how they do things. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that glitch that was found by a community member might not actually help for... Well, it doesn't help for this section. And might You'll not be seeing that in later in the run, for sure. It's still useful for 80%. Or 100%. Yeah. Wow. It's later in the run, though. Okay. So yeah, now he's going to head back up through this damn part. He just blew up the power plant, so the obelisk, the big tower that shoots lasers at you, is going to have its power turned off. 
Let's get to pick Can up this health here because. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the flipper was a very useful gun in this speedrun because uh, it stuns guaranteed if you hit an enemy who's vulnerable to fire with it, which is all enemies except for flamethrowers. So it stuns guaranteed, which is very helpful. Uh, its DPS isn't the greatest, but that is more than made up for the fact that its stun is just really it, it does a lot more damage the closer you are, and if you get headshots with it as well, with the flamethrower, which yes, the flamethrower yes. does headshot damage. Um, then Every actually does gun in this game damage. headshots. Even rockets, even rockets. <laughs> it can one shot you if you get hit with a rocket to the head. All right, so now he's gonna go pick up more health and armor upgrades. Again, these increase your his health and armor permanently throughout the rest of the speedrun, um, which is just super awesome. He is now here is the catacomb section of this level. Uh, it is fairly straightforward. You walk in a straight line and shoot enemies in your way. It's gonna be shoulder peeking with the third person mode to make sure he knows where the enemies are and can line them up. Yeah, and then he's also using the free look available in third person that's not available in first person to aim as he goes through. Um, this next section is a little bit scary because there's that dude with a rocket launcher that he expertly dealt with. And there are no secondary objectives in this part, so this route is actually the same as any point. You just run, you just run through it and try not to let enemies kill you on the way. Um, this next section does have secondary objectives. There are three... They're called Tiberian Machines. They look like big barrels of Tiberian, which is like the green crystal. Uh, you just have to kill them, uh, but they're really low HP. You can just kind of shoot them with your rifle from a distance and they die instantly. So that costs maybe a second compared to the 80% route. It's not really a big deal. So now this section uh, is a little bit scary on 100% because there's a rocket launcher, an officer, and two chem soldiers. All three of them are fairly dangerous, especially the rocket launcher. But again, EJ, expert, he's the world record holder in this category. He's re he's ready for it, and he kills them. Um, and yeah, in this next section, we will we continue Kill along this path. All right, so coming up, we're coming into the Hand of Nod, which is like the enemy barracks. Uh, there's a rocket soldier on this tower that he's more than ready for. Turns out having enemy locations memorized is really helpful to not die. Um, so now he's going to head down to this elevator and make his way through the barracks. This is just kind of the necessary path to get to the spot he needs to go, which is the roof, uh, to go and watch a very thrilling cutscene. And he gets chef kill, which is good luck for the run. Oh, yeah. Locke does not like you killing the Nod Chef for some reason. I don't know why. He just calls you for it big time. Yeah, your boss scolds you for killing the Nod Chef who has a flamethrower and shoots at you with his flamethrower. Um, by the way, I love that they gave chefs flamethrowers. My friend in culinary school was super jealous. <laughs> um, but now we trigger a 40 second cutscene. Yeah, um, I believe it's because the, the chef is miscoded as a civilian, so you get your boss yelling at you for killing a civilian. There's no penalty for it, but it just yells at you. Um, but now we get plot. Woo, plot. Um, the plot of Renegade <laughs> is <laughs> that we are Commando Havoc. And we are trying to rescue those three scientists who were just taken aboard that plane. That is our ex-girlfriend, Sakura. So um, and that is her current new boyfriend, Mendoza. They would work for the terrorists. Incoming. Do we even know if they're dating, though? I think they are. I think that was like cut content. It's implied they are in the main game. All right. So now DJ is going to has to blow up this building. You know, he could go into the building the normal way, or he could slide down the side and break open this window. But yeah, basically, that's our, our character's ex-girlfriend, and at least the guy who we think is dating her. We just tried to kill him be with a sniper rifle because that's a reasonable behavior for an ex to have. Um, <laughs> very normal. Very, very normal, okay? Don't question it. It's very normal. Nothing is wrong with that. Now, this is supposed to actually be a boss fight uh, with him now, but uh, the developers didn't really foresee... I don't think they really foresaw the fact that players would just jump off the roof and head to the mission end trigger. Or in this case, jump off the roof, blow up the building, and then head to the mission end trigger because we have secondary objectives to achieve. So, yeah, we could do this boss fight with him. He's, like, just standing in front of the building waiting for us to, like, fight him. He's somewhere over uh, there. Yeah, he's somewhere over there. Don't he's, like, super him. mad at you. Oh, no, we're just going to walk to the mission end trigger. That's the mission. And that is all 18 secondary objectives in the mission. Five stars, armored assault. Um, woo. Most of the secondary objectives are not that in-depth. 
but they're just a lot of them. But yeah, so that's Armored Assault. So, but now, we just got to board that plane in the cutscene DJ skipped. Um, our ex-girlfriend, because she was mad we shot a sniper rifle in her close proximity, uh, shot our plane down, because that's like a reasonable thing to do. And we just crash landed on this volcano volcanic island, where coincidentally, our side happens to be assaulting it in, in a military uh, operation. So we're gonna go help them out a little bit. Um, the first mission objective is to secure, to secure that beachhead, which involves killing the officers and killing the turret. So now we're gonna progress through this part as normal, which is where we just kind of kill these grunts. Yeah. This next spot, I wanted to see DJ hit the Tiberium jump. That's, that, I've only hit it once in my life. Okay, I hit it like 10 times. It's, I don't know. I, I, I think I have a special touch there. Um, that is Tiberium jump. Uh, Tiberium jump, that is, so Tiberium in the Command & Conquer universe is this uh, radioactive material that is very valuable. It's basically a metaphor for oil. Um, and you can hit a basically f pixel perfect jump there to not take damage from its radiation there. Or you could, you know, just take the five damage and be done with it. That's not really a big deal. Uh, next up, the secondary objective, he has to kill some sand sites. So he's gonna kill some sand sites with his rocket launcher by lining them up. And boom. Uh, and then there's this gun turret here. Um, that is very terrifying if you're not ready for it on this difficulty, by the way. Like, it just jump scares you by shooting you in the face with a rocket. And it's a very uh, fast rate of fire compared to a normal, like, CPU light tank. Yeah, it's basically a tank, but on a turret that's better. Uh, it's it's, a little bit it's the same turret that a player would have access to, but not a bot. Yeah. Or so next tank. up, there's this big turret. To kill it, we could either kill it normally, or we could kill its SAM sites that protect it and call it an airstrike. Uh, the airstrike is much faster, um, so we're going to do that. And now we're going to continue as normal. And our good friend Captain Sowanso, uh, who kills your ears if you have his volume too loud, and by too loud I mean on, um, is going to thank us for, you know, saving his butt from the big turret. He's... And now we head in to the Nod base. Um, this section is a little bit uh, involved in the sense that there are three three officers who will call in reinforcements. DJ is taking care to kill them as fast as possible so that they call in as little reinforcements as possible. And then now we need to go into this communication center to our right uh, and download data about where the scientists who got kidnapped were. But we need the key card to access it, so we're going to enter this refinery first where there is an officer who has one. We're going to uh, shoot our gun at enemies that both to kill them as well as to bait them out to make them run towards us to save a little bit of time. And then we are going to uh, head back up with the key card that he dropped. Uh, if you look at the bottom left, you can see what key cards DJ has. He has the green key card, which is the level one, which is all that you need on this level. Um, and so now he is going to head to the communication center to download the data about those scientists. Uh, this communication center on the plotter ups, this is a rather scary section, actually, in terms of gameplay difficulty, because there is a turret in the top left that DJ's gonna rocket, and then there are a bunch of dudes that, uh, there's enough of them that they will overwhelm you on this difficulty if you aren't playing this carefully like DJ is. And then now we're gonna head through this door and go to the terminal and download its information. From here, however, we now hear a, a helicopter pass by outside, we just hit a trigger, and we're going to have the game's first boss fight, Woo! Look at how complicated of a boss fight this is. He just shot six oh, rockets. Man. Oh, that was man. hard, man. That was so hard. Let's go. Um. Yeah. So she's supposed to do. That's your ex-girlfriend in the helicopter there. You just shot her down into a volcano. No, no big deal. She survives. Don't worry about it. Um. And she. Uh. Is supposed to do like a circling pattern and make it actually hard to hit her, but you know why? Why? Why would she do that when you can just get up the elevator fast enough such that she her AI doesn't start doing that until after she dies? That that that's essentially what happens. Um, and now we're just gonna run to the end of the level as the volcano explodes. We just triggered a volcano by shooting down a helicopter, um, and that's that. Um, 
I'm not sure how the physics works it. there, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a mathematician, not a physicist, but I happen to think that that company has liked it. I don't think that would happen. Uh, this is- next up, we stow away onto a submarine to get onto a ship to escape the volcano exploding. And this brings us into the level, aptly named, Stowaway. Um, this level starts off fast, but we see DJ run through, kill some explosive barrels. Uh, this level is almost exactly the same as any percent, actually. Um, just with one subtlety, which is where there are these terminals down to his bottom that he is going to shoot. And that is the secondary objective, is to kill those terminals. Uh, you're supposed to go through the elevators and, like, you know, be good at it, but you could also just shoot them like this. It's faster. Also, importantly, on this difficulty, enemy black hand snipers spawn for the first real time we see them in the run. Uh, black hand snipers are scary. They rival the rocket launcher dudes in terms of their fear because their headshots will one shot you. Their body shots will come close to one shotting you. Um, they are terrifying. So yeah, DJ is now going to press up this elevator. He notably doesn't kill the guy on the right, because if he does, it will make a Tiberium mutant spawn. Um, and then he's going to grab this armor and head up the elevator to head into, uh, first mate into prisoners. Um, this is a fairly tightly rutted interior section, where he has to kill this guy to grab his keycard, and then he's going to head upstairs, uh, and kill the first mate to grab his keycard. He's going to use the flamethrower as a mass stun. It shoots through enemies and it stuns on hit, so it's really good. Um, next up, we come into first mate to kill the first mate and get his key card, which we will need. Um, there, so there's a spot of temp soldiers, and then he's going to head glitch and get the next couple of floors of flamethrower guys. And get um, do you want to talk about like why head glitch works and why it works in like first person and stuff? But I'm sorry. Oh yeah, for sure. So you might have noticed throughout this run that DJ was playing in a variety of first and third person. Um, there is a major difference between first and third person that runners have to take into account, and it, there's this is actually the reason why first person is necessary for some tricks like the head glitch, which is that in first person your gun shoots out of your face, whereas in third person your gun shoots out of your gun. Uh, I'm gonna pause for the greatest cutscene in video game history. Take the sub. You got the control key? Not yet. Get going. I'll meet you there. You're going up against the whole crew by yourself. Don't seem fair, does it? Maybe I'll shoot left hand. Out. So that is the most iconic line of the Command and Conquer uh, series, um, and uh, deservedly so. Um, but yeah. So now we will. Uh, but yeah. The reason a lot of tricks work, for instance, actually the rocket launcher animation cancel you saw DJ do in Armored Assault uh, also requires first person for this exact reason. You need your gun to shoot out of your face and not your gun so that it doesn't actually collide, the, so the bolts don't actually collide with whatever you're, like, standing next to and instead come out of your, the top of your head. Um, so next up, this section uh, is a little bit tricky on this difficulty because there's a lot of enemies, uh, but DJ makes it look easy. Trust me, this isn't. Uh, and then he's gonna pick up his armor because he is rather low on it. You want to it later? That's a sniper. I don't know what he was doing there. He's not usually there. That's the weirdest spot I've ever seen for that sniper. Whoa, that is terrifying. Okay, so... Yeah, so there's these black hand grunts. They have rifles, but they're a little bit tankier than the normal grunt. But there's also the black hand sniper, and DJ is gonna use the flamethrower to stun lock them as he runs out through here. Um, that is a scary section, and I haven't seen the snipers really spawn like that before. Uh, the enemy AI and spawns in this game are a little bit due to variance. Yeah, uh, they that, that hasn't happened to me before uh, in terms of spawn layout. They generally spawn the same place, but um, that is like the exception. So now DJ um, is going to do the next secondary objective, which we do in any percent because it's just as fast. We just kill that helicopter. Um, that spawns and then he is now uh this is sniper room uh sniper room is scary for the name first word in the, its name which is that there are lots of snipers in this room and they're, they're they're terrifying actually um he's trying to jiggle peek this one to bait him uh to run towards him so that he can actually get a shot so this one is above him now uh that one is he's gonna flamethrower lock this one and then get a kill nice I do not um, want any of these snipers alive for later. I don't want to get jump scared by them. That's why yeah, I'm taking next, time. And next we head into torpedoes. Torpedoes are a primary objective to complete this mission. To be honest, they're completely unnecessary. You press E twice, and that's the objective. Um, 
But now we're gonna head up to these these stairs. Uh, he's gonna take these fairly fast because he can just stun lock enemies on the way through. But he takes plays a little bit safe. Um, Actually, I'm waiting up, for supplies. That's why I wait. Oh, yeah. See if uh, they show up anything. Yeah, try to get that 10% ammo drop. Uh, I my heart skipped a beat for you there. Okay, so that that's kitchen. Kitchen is terrifying. Um, because it has a flamethrower dude, aka a chef, who has a flamethrower because he's a chef, of course he does. Um, and then there is a bunch of grunts. Uh, he heads up now towards the top deck of the ship, he's gonna head towards the captain area, and he's using his uh, flamethrower to stun lock in a, in a, as he runs past them, he's just gonna he tops it to stun them, so that he doesn't have to deal with them. Um, and now here comes captain, the captain is guarded by some snipers and by some Chem, chem warriors. Uh, the chem warriors aren't actually too bad here. You can kind of just touch off them with your chain gun and they die pretty fast. But yeah, he's gonna grab the key card from the captain, which is uh, necessary to end the level. But now we are. He is going to uh, be wary. That is a guy with a shotgun. Fun fact: This is the only level in single player where enemies have shotguns, um, and you cannot pick them up. And then. He is going to head back through this area where we skip past a lot of Black Hand and be ready to stunlock them. He does that easily. And same thing here. Um, and he's going to head back out towards the end of the level. Now he's going to have to go back through Sniper Room. Um, the the fast way is to drop down here. Because you you do... Uh, there's a On this difficulty, there's a way to have enough to, make, to do the drop in two parts. First drop down to that balcony, then drop down to the main floor. That is slightly faster, but quite risky because there's still a lot of enemies in Sniper Room who would have either respawned or you didn't kill them in the first place. And they, with your reduced health take from the fall damage, it is very vulnerable for you. Um, but, next up here, we have to just get these prisoners out of here. Firstly, we have to make sure they don't die. If they die, this mission fails. Um, and then this, there's this one prisoner who just is standing outside of the trigger because he's nice to you like that. We're gonna tell him to get inside the trigger. Hey, we're trying to speed around here. Primary Come on, complete. what's up, bro? And then he gets in the trigger, and the level ends. So next up, Deadly Reunion. So, back to the plot of Renegade. The gripping plot. This game won many awards for its writing. Um... So, this level is about helping your friends. And now, DJ, what are your thoughts on helping your friends? We don't. We don't help your friends. Uh, any any justification for that? We don't have to. We don't That's have my only justification. That's a good motto to live life by, everybody. <laughs> like, listen to the wisdom of the speedrunning here. <laughs> this level, the Dead Six in, in this game are Havoc's old commando team. And, uh, you know... They're, we're supposed to help them. That's the whole point of this level. We're, we're gonna go bail them out. But you know what? Helping them is slow, and we don't need to. So, uh, in this level, you'll see the hardest glitch in the game be used uh, to skip that objective. And then we'll see quite a few secondaries involving him shooting a lot of rockets at tanks. Such as this one. Um, next up, this first secondary is for him to clear out this village square and defend it. Uh, one of his friend's gunner is there. His gunner is gonna help him, but, you know, uh, we didn't ask him to help us, so, you know, we don't owe him anything. We're not gonna help him. Um, because that's slow. Um, but yeah, so we are going to defend this town square a little bit. There's gonna be a couple waves of enemies. Um, DJ's taking special care to kill the rocket launchers out of the, out, out of the sky. There's that civilian just kind of standing in the way of his bullets because that civilian is a, is a really big fan of his. Uh, wants to sign a bullet or something. This is dead eye. But now, he, uh, instead of helping his friend Gunner, he's now going to just continue on. Because uh, he completed the objective, and that's what you need. Um, next up, coming along uh, Flame Bridge, uh, there's flamethrowers who spawn in front of him and behind him. Uh, he's going to go kill them. And then we come to the scariest corner in Renegade. Um, behind the, to the left of this corner is a sniper for and four flamethrowers. He's gonna bait the flamethrowers out. The sniper is on a balcony above him. To his right is a rocket soldier who he's gonna snipe. 
Um, that snipe, and then he's going to third person peek headshot the sniper before the sniper can even see him. Uh, which is really clean. Uh, that section is incredibly scary and will ruin your 100% run. That section will ruin your any percent run. That corner is terrifying. Um, but DJ, you know, he's the master of this. We're, we're, we watch, we'll just watch him work. Uh, progressing through, we're just gonna kinda walk through this level. Um, killing enemies who are in our way, but it's not, like, required or anything. He just does it because they're gonna kill him otherwise. Those Nod Soldiers had to do what they were looking at, by the way. They... Um, next up, he'll kill this APC. Um, he'll spawn a few guys before I get the heat. Uh, finishes it off, but it doesn't really matter because they are are all quick work. Next up, there's this gun turret here, uh, and uh, above the balcony, there are two soldiers there. He can see one of them, so he's going to kill them ahead of time. Uh, and then next up, there's going to be one more soldier above this balcony that he's going to handle because it's just one dude. And for any of you watching the speedrun, by the way, DJ is doing this, like, incredibly cleanly. I must emphasize here. This I heard something. this difficulty, enemies will win 1v1s versus you. Or, like, they'll win- they'll, they, they won't, on average, win the 1v1, but they will win the 2v1. GDI, and help. he's fought a lot of 2v1s, 3v1s, and up. Oh, no. He's Oops, I'm wrong. Faced it. Alright, <laughs> so DJ does the, <laughs> does the classic Renegade 100% mistake, which is forgetting where to turn in that building. I believe everyone does that. I don't think anyone's ever correctly turned there. And then we see- <laughs> the staircase uh, is on that side. <laughs> I, I've never seen a person correctly turn their first try. It's actually really <laughs> funny. Um, he's going to complete the secondary objective where some civilians offer him to show him a helicopter. Uh, he's, DJ says, oh, thanks, that's pretty cool, and then walks away. After uh, saying a few words to Mendoza, who is the current uh, boyfriend, the guy we shot a sniper rifle at in Mission 3, uh, the current boyfriend of our ex, um, who is kind of mad about us shooting a sniper rifle at him. So he tries to kill us, but only a little bit. We fend him off a little bit. Fend him off. He's gonna come back though. Don't worry about it. Um, so next up, this section, um, we are going to kill through these, kill these officers, and then a secondary objective is we are going to do an on, uh, basically an on rail section here with a sniper rifle. Um, if I doubt DJ is gonna peek such that you can really see it, but that big, okay, uh, yeah, that big black thing is uh, the uh, obelisk. Uh, in that obelisk. Uh, is it's being built and we're trying to kill its engineers who are building it so uh we're gonna just kind of wait for them to peek into our scope and then we are going to shoot them in the face or in the body um this section is actually failable by the way if you miss your shots but and i have failed this in 100 percent run before Notably, DJ is actually taking very careful about the angle he peeks here because there are a lot of dudes behind that corner that he is not exposing himself to that would very much like to uh, kill him. Where's this last in here? It took a while. That I think there's some randomness in when they actually take, uh, walk out of cover there. Alright, yeah. But they, they decided to risk uh, the DJ, and uh, they got shot in the face as punishment. I guess most of them were stomach shots. They got shot in the stomach, which I think would actually hurt more. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, next up, the most intense secondary objective in Renegade, press E on this guy. <laughs> Alright, so now we are going to head through uh, the vehicle section of this level. Um, this vehicle section is fairly straightforward. There's a couple of rocket guys in various spots, but it's fairly simple. Um, we see DJ funny meme strat. Let's go. Woo. Um, so vehicles, this is the most important strat for me to explain to you, all of you, by the way. Yeah. Uh, funny meme strat, the name coined by DJ, uh, and the strat found by, uh, I believe, Stefan1192, is the strat that saves you, like, 20 frames throughout the entire speedrun. If you do it perfectly, and if you make a mistake, it costs you like four seconds. Um, but you know, this is we, we want to save the frames. Uh, where we sh the tank shots have a small amount of knockback to them as we shoot them, so we shoot behind us to propel ourselves with the knockback a couple frames forward. Uh, we see DJ do a couple of holy crap, that's was so scary. Um, that ABC spawned three rocket soldiers, um, and DJ is getting flame tanked. Let's go. Um, 
but he handles it with the reload animation cancels. Uh, I'll say what I mean by flame tank in a second, but first we will see the hardest trick in all of this speedrun. Congratulations, he just did the hardest trick in all of this speedrun. Everyone in chat, clap, please. You just walk left and you avoid the trigger that fails the mission if you don't do any of the primary objectives. That's basically so, what yeah. to... You know, helping your friends. We didn't do that. Well, this mission's about helping your friends. Um, we see the best layerness jump of all time. Uh, this mission is about helping your friends, and you're supposed to fail there if you haven't helped your friends yet. But the trigger is badly placed, so we can walk around it. Uh, this jump I is called. I don't know why my consistency is down here. There we go. Because your FPS sucks. Or yeah, your FPS sure. is too high. I know. All right, just just frame luck, easy. Um, okay, so that jump saves one second if you hit it first try, and if you don't hit it first try, it costs you two seconds. Um, that jump is uh, called Lyrinus jump after the runner who uses it a lot. Um, and yeah. Um, with what I was saying about FPS, jumps on this game are actually easier on lower FPS due to how the physics works and is frame rate dependent. And his FPS is 165, as you can see at the top right, which means that he has a little bit of trouble hitting a precise jump like that. Um, and uh, just to expand on one more point before uh, we continue on with this uh, route, is previously you saw in the flame tank section, it actually, uh, if you looked closely, his tank shots didn't actually hit the flame tank even though he was directly on it. Um, the reason for that is because the flame tank hitbox is insanely bugged and has several dead zones where the shot just disappears into nothingness, um, which actually can ruin your run at times because you just have shots that don't hit that should've. But next up, he's gonna do the secondary objective where he saves Babushka uh, by killing those dudes around her and pressing E. Um, Next, Ooh, man, let's go Gunner! Woo! Shoutouts to your friends, they help you even when you don't help them. That is the point of friendship, everybody. Alright, so Gunner, uh, one of his friends, is has to do with a rocket launcher. And this section is where the mission will end after we kill two helicopters, uh, three artilleries, and a bunch of dudes. However, you know what we could- However, his friend Gunner with a rocket launcher actually shot down one of the helicopters. For him. It was- Insanely nice of him. Teamwork does make the dream work casual speedrun. When our team does the work and we do the be fast part. That that's the solution. Alright, so now uh, we have one more helicopter to shoot down. And to kill a couple more guys. Um these gu the guys who you have to kill are kind of infamous for walking away from you in really inopportune times. Um so DJ is going to slowly chain, chain gun this helicopter down as the guys around him continue to parachute in. And then this mission will end once I believe once kill this helicopter. I believe it's enough guys for the quota to count. Wow, no he hasn't. But Gunner, uh, not to be outshined by DJ, kills the last guy with his rocket yeah, launcher. Gunner is the only rocket guy that's actually any good. Yeah, all the other rocket guys on the enemy either terrify us, or, like in the first level, the rocket guy uh, have bad RNG and cost us 10 seconds. So next up is, this is the level Grip of the Black Hand. Grip of the Black Hand is supposed to be a stealth level. However, um, in the first 10 seconds of this level, we will notice DJ has shot his rocket launcher several times, his grenade launcher several times, and his very loud sn sniper rifle also several times. I don't think he really understands what stealth means, but don't tell him, okay? This is more fun that way. I actually don't know what stealth means, so... It's true. It's what you're doing, don't worry about it. So, uh, as part of the stealth level, uh, one of the objectives is to disable the alarms. Now, the alarms are already going off because, you know, he's so good at what he's doing. Right? Um, you don't have to kill that, you got the... Oh, I got the supplies. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh... But yeah, so he just disabled the alarms after sparking them loudly. Um, and then now he is going to do this level basically as as in any percent. Uh, which is involves walking through a lot of very confusing hallways in a mansion. Um, where, as part of the game, we have found out the scientists are being held through our friends that we definitely helped. And we're so grateful that they told us the information. Um, but yeah, so first things first, we're going to walk up to the top of this mansion and go to its computer terminal, uh, where it conveniently says exactly where the scientists are, which is in the basement. And then, importantly, we're going to pick up a very special weapon. 
internal computer systems yeah so this is uh this is the personal ion cannon uh the personal ion cannon uh has several several problems within the lore because of uh how stupidly broken it is i i might add um because it is a super weapon in a in a, the size of a rifle and it will win all of our boss fights for us very quickly because that is the worst grenade bounce I've ever seen. Oh, okay. What happens if you're too close, I think? Yeah, so next up, he's gonna head to the basement. He's gonna fight his way through. Um, oh, I don't have a reload. My bad. Not having rockets reloaded there makes it more awkward to go through there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be right underneath the ceiling turret because they, they just get lined up with my head and headshots do a ton of damage, even to you, to you, so. I think the headshot multiplier is like six or eight times. I don't know the exact number, but it's a lot. Most games are like two or three times, but Renegade is eight times. Yeah, I it's, it is eight times. Yeah, it's it's a lot. You want to keep your head safe. Yeah. Good life advice. All right, so now we have a, a minute long cutscene uh, where, firstly, our ex will point a pistol at us. Don't ask us how she survived getting shot into a volcano down in a helicopter. I don't think. That's I think really I think there's a thing to... called plot armor or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then now, uh, because we defeated her, the big bad guy Ravishaw, who's the really short guy, is gonna do a yeah, very, very, very short. Monologue. He's very short. Make 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 sure you know that, guys. Okay. It's, it's gonna be very important later. But yeah, he's he's gonna do an evil villain monologue about how uh, he his his min underlings have failed him for the last time and is gonna order. Uh, his other underling Mendoza to kill his girlfriend, uh, which he does without hesitation. Great work on that. Um, and then, uh, my internet is being great. Uh, actually, I'm dro I'm the one dropping frames. I'm the one dropping right now. Okay. Yeah, that's um, on me. Luckily, we just missed the cutscene. It didn't really matter. Uh, out of the cutscene, we're going to pick up another permanent health upgrade. Increases our health for the rest of the run. Alright, don't worry guys, you just missed the explosion in the in the cutscene. Those are the literal only frames you missed. Not that important. Um, but, yeah, so now we're going to head up back. Uh, we now have Sydney Mobius. Sydney Mobius is... Uh, pick up the armor. There you go. One of the three scientists we're supposed to rescue. She's the daughter of, of the main one, uh, Ignatio, who's a character in the first Command and Conquer. Um, Sydney, uh, is, we're gonna run out with Sydney, but we're not actually gonna protect her because the RNG that she dies is, like, super low with enemy shooting at her. And we're gonna pull out a personal ion cannon as we walk into this cutscene trigger. As Sydney magically teleports about 50 feet to catch up to us. I'll just stand over here. But, yeah. So now we're gonna have, uh, the... Mendoza want to fight us, and we're like, sure, you're gonna try to hit us with karate, and we're gonna shoot you in the face with a super weapon. Um, and we headshot him, and it instantly triggers his final death scene, where then now we shoot him, and he dies. What a boss fight. Such a difficult boss fight. And yeah, there's that there's kind of a common theme around here with Renegade bosses. Yeah, uh... And that is the grip of the black hand. Um, another five stars. So, You'll need to ask about Mobius. next up, we're gonna head into Obelisk of Oppression. Um, the name of this level is accurate because it oppresses your soul, okay? This level is the run killer of run killers, both in this category and in other categories. Um, I think it's worse than 80%, if you ask me. I think, I think it is worth it worse than 80%, though I think it's terrible in 100% too. But, I mean, all levels uh, are terrible at 100%, honestly. True. <laughs> that's okay, awesome. that's this, all I'll say about it, that. This is a little bit run-of-the-mill for 100%. Uh, this level is my is my personal enemy because of how many any percent runs in my next round. Um, we have to now... So, our friends, we now have to escort them out. Uh, this level, as you'll notice, is an incomplete... Just reuses the assets from two levels ago. Except now it's in the daytime and we're going through it backwards. But yeah, so our friends, uh, they're going to make short work of the enemies here uh, as we kill the turrets that would have tried to kill them. And then, um, Nod is going to nuke us. 
because that's the most effective way to kill a group of five people. Is to, is to nuke them. Yeah, so uh, they're gonna nuke us and so we gotta run away from the nuke. Um, meanwhile, uh, to, as we run away from the nuke, to get ourselves out of, out of dodge, uh, we need to get a helicopter and to get our to get the scientist Sydney out of here because she's still our, our we're, we're still trying to rescue her and we need to also get the rest of our team out of here. Um, but uh, to get out of Dodge, we need to turn off, get out rid of the enemy's anti-air, and so we need our hacker teammate Hotwire to do that for us. And so we're gonna clear the way for her. Um, frames are dropping still a little bit. Yeah, so Hotwire is here. Um, we are just here with her. Uh, we just jumped on her head because we're cool like that. And we are going to escort her to the places that she needs to hack. Um, Hotwire RNG is pretty okay in this category because we're going slow enough that it doesn't really go wrong. Her AI is a little bit meh. But yeah, so now in this upcoming section, there's a sniper. There's several uh, APCs. Hotwire decided she wanted to rock, walk in front of DJ's rocket launcher, which is very lucky that she didn't, like, die to that. Um, and then now we're going to long-range rocket, uh, these all to death. And with that, that will give her enough of a window to start hacking the enemy, uh, enemy anti-air, which will give our team a way to, to get out of here. Um... An interesting decision DJ will make will be whether or not to wait for Hotwire to finish this or not. I think you have a bit of delay, by the way. About, like, maybe five seconds yeah, behind. I, th I think the frame drops. Uh, let me refresh my... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, refresh it. Yeah, the frame drops, I think, put me a little bit farther behind the moment. Okay, there we go. Um, did you have to pick him up? Pick him yeah, up, I did, I did. Not? Okay, so yeah, uh, after his team gets out of there through the helicopter that the, that we just called in for them, uh, we get another permanent set of health and armor upgrades, which are nice. Um, it's a judgment call there of whether you want to take the small amount of time loss to get that upgrade in this category, it's basically always good. So yeah, now we're gonna progress through uh, this v uh, this alley of enemy chem soldiers, uh, tanks, and officers. Uh, we make fairly short work of them, and then uh, their DJ will encounter a buggy to his right here that he is going to uh, grenade. And in general, he has to be pretty scared of this, these kind of vehicles. Uh, I cannot emphasize how easily they can kill you. Uh, this next section is scary because there are two snipers, a rocket soldier, and several chem, chem soldiers. Uh, he's going to third-person peek because otherwise it is too risky. Uh, they will kill him basically instantly otherwise. Um, this difficulty is really... Even casually, this difficulty is really hard. And um, DJ makes quick work of it. And next up, he's going to run to another section of more snipers, more rocket soldiers, more buggies. Um, and we'll see him take it fairly slow here as he deals with them. He is going to do this all from as basically as long range as he can, just to be as safe as possible. Uh, the rockets has base, the rocket launcher is basically infinite range. The other guns don't quite, but the rocket launcher is very much just a, a sh slow projectile that... Uh, goes a very long way. I believe it's actually a pivot. Um, but next up, he's going to come into this village square here. Uh, he has a secondary objective to kill these two... I'm not sure what they are. Satellite dishes? I don't even know what they're for, to be honest. Uh, they're, he has to kill them. That's the secondary objective. <laughs> um, and then he's going to go through the section. Uh, he forgets about the sniper until the sniper shoots a bullet in front of his face. And... Uh, I, I thought I didn't hit the spawn triggers for them yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably made a made his heart skip a little bit, but yeah, no, there's the second sniper that he's going to be ready for. Uh, he switched in this section to using the laser rifle. Uh, the laser rifle is really the... You only really get this gun starting at this level. Um, it has a guaranteed stun. Or it might be a 70%, I'm not sure. It's either 70% or guaranteed. It's a really high chance to stun such that you'll rock it basically all the time. Um, Why did you get snipers, for example? 
Yeah. It's really helpful against the snipers and rocket soldiers because it just stuns them before they can get a shot off on him. Uh, next up, he's going to shoot his rocket through this corner at this tank. And then finish it off with his chain gun. It's to not waste a rocket because he is, um, ammo conservation is very important. Um, but yes, now he's going to head through, uh, be ready, he has these enemy spawn points memorized because they're very scary. Um, and next up, he's going to rock the slime tank from afar. Um, and up to, actually, I missing shots, wow. I, um, yeah, I was I leaving you, too much. I, I, thought you got, I thought you got flame tanked. No, I was no. just missing. I was just missing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm just um, bad. He's going to finish off with the personal ion cannon. The personal ion cannon is a super valuable weapon. The fact that it basically one-shots everything you care about at one-shotting, including the boss fights. Um, but actually, after this level, we will get our ammo reset. So we don't actually care that much about ammo conservation in this level specifically. Um... Next up, we get a very, uh, a rather intense secondary objective. We have to get two prisoners out of here who are kind of trapped by this massive swathe of Nod armor and snipers. Um, so we, DJ's going to take this pretty slow to try to... And by the way, whenever I say pretty slow, I'm not saying he's running slowly. I'm saying you have to take this section slow because the enemies will kill you. Otherwise, this category is really difficult from a from an FPS brutality standpoint. Um, and so him taking it slow is actually the fast way. Um, and him taking it fast would be the, I die and have to play for 15 more minutes of this level because I have to restart in this category. But he's going to peek through uh, and kill all of uh, these enemy spawns and snipers. And then finally, once he's cleared out, he's gonna go get these prisoners and rescue them. Uh, he has to still protect them for a couple more seconds. They have to escape before this objective is complete, and they can and will die here. If you do not protect them, this mission will fail. Um, or not the mission will fail, the objective will fail, and so you can't get 100%. He, in the meantime, he's going to be killing this APC uh, around the corner again with his rocket launcher. They have this very nice... Vehicles in this game have a very nice habit of sticking out around corners where they can't see you, but you can see them. Um, and then he is going to uh, kill these officers who are Got a going to swarm them here. here? Uh, next up is the vehicle section of Obelisk of Oppression. This is the probably the hardest vehicle section in the game. Um, basically, we need the whole Obelisk in the title Obelisk of Oppression uh, is uh, oppressing the town, and we need to go take it out. Um, and so we are going to do that. Uh, first of all, we're going to get in this tank. Uh, and kill enemies uh, who are around us. And then uh, DJ a little bit over peaks there and the tank gets a shot off on him. Uh, but now he's going to go to the corner and he's going to animation cancel kill the tank. And then he's going to go to the corner and animation cancel kill this artillery. Um, and then now there's this APC. He's going to shoot this helicopter out of the sky. Except unfortunately, doesn't hit the shot. That's not too big of a deal. Uh, there's these two rocket soldiers directly to his right. He is very ready for him, for them, though. Uh, and he's going to splash them to death uh, before they really can do anything super effective versus him. Um, notably, this is actually a section where you get pu very punished if you go too slow uh, because there are, are tanks that will spawn behind you in this, in this level. Um, so he's going to at this fairly fast. Uh, if you play this section casually, you almost certainly will go too slow. Hard to but, yeah, I'm stuck in the Animation cancel kill the the flame tank, and then actually he gets stuck on the on the light tank there, or on his own tank there, because uh, you cannot enter a vehicle if you are in the air. Um, so now he's gonna corner peek and animation cancel kill these three tanks. Um, and yeah, so killing these three tanks is that is the safe way, um, but it's necessary on this difficulty, and then he's gonna take get the final objective by blowing up those missiles and just all takes to shooting them. Now we head into the second, or the final section of this level where we will come around to the obelisk of oppression. Um, the, so the mission ends when you kill the two missile launchers behind of it, behind it. Uh, so, but the two secondary objectives are to kill the obelisk as well as there's an invisible stealth tank that Nod uses around here, and the other objective is to kill the stealth tank. So he's going to kill the obelisk by just shooting it from range, outside of its range, and then he's going to pick out the invisible tank, uh, because it, you can slightly see its texture, and then he's going to kill that. 
and then he's going to kill the missile launchers, and the mission will end. And that is a five-star obelisk of oppression in, like, tw um, <laughs> as the commentator here, I I've said this a lot, but man, audience, DJ is doing this, like, so impressively with these, like, 100 percent times. This is insane. Um, like this this run so far. Uh, the beginning had it one or two hiccups, but like, yeah. Okay. Upcoming is uh, Evolution of Evil. Uh, in this uh, mission, in the plot, Sydney, the the scientist we rescued, uh, she uh, leads us into a trap in the desert, and we got all our weapons stripped from us. So first, we have to escape from prison, courtesy of our ex-girlfriend, who did not die either the volcano helicopter crash or the get shot with big explosion in chemical lab god god point that out. she survived both of those things that she was in the middle of um and she rescues us from this prison and then we are going to uh pay her back by uh getting back at her old boss who tried to kill her um so dj is gonna skip dj is gonna skip from this prison uh he's gonna walk outside kill some turrets and then get into this buggy which is conveniently placed in such a way that we can drive it out of here in a very fast manner. There's only right. one secondary objective here that I'm going to be doing. It's very exciting. Very, very engaging. Oh, yeah. This is a really cool secondary objective. Oh, yeah. He shoots that. <laughs> that's that's it. Right? <laughs> that's the only right, thing that's so now different. This, now this level is as in any percent. He's going to pick up this armor upgrade as he moves out. Um, this next section is a little bit tricky because there's a tank in front of him that will shoot one of two ways and he has to correctly read which way it's going to shoot and dodge the shot so his buggy doesn't get blown up. Um, and next up is uh, Flame Skip. I'm not sure if he's going to go for it on this buggy health or not. I'm doing but, it. I have no pulse. Okay. Alright, he's going to send it. This is buggy. This is Flame Skip. That flame tank wants to shoot you. Um, so, he... I took a shot from the turret there. I didn't think it would yeah. shoot me so early. That was a really good setup. Um, so yeah, that's flames. So if he does that correctly, that's called flame skip, uh, where you drive your buggy past the tank in such a way that it should kill you. Uh, but if you go at the precise angle, actually, the hitbox on its flames won't hit you correctly, and you can go past it. However, there's also a turret there. Uh, that turret usually just shoots about three seconds later than it did there, so uh, DJ was not ready for it and it blew up his buggy. But it wasn't a big deal because he just has to leg it the rest on foot, and not really a big consequence besides getting headshot by the flame tank there. I'm not sure if this is Discord or the stream, but your mic just started sounding way different. Oh, I'm not, I'm not talking right now, but... Yeah, no, it like, started picking up background noise. I'm not, oh, I'm, I'm no, just, let me just I'm do Discord. Let's... I think OBS would be fine. Yeah, um, just... If chat, chat can enlighten us on how it's doing, but... Yeah. All right, so this next section, he has to kill some APCs and a buggy around the corner. That is a very good RNG rocket, rocket launcher pickup. He was very low in rockets, though. Yeah. Um... But yes, uh, next he's going to progress through this underground base to save the next of the scientists he must save. Uh, Elena Petrova and Ignatio Mobius, the, the two that he didn't save. He didn't save, save, save. Um, how, so he's going to pick up this tank, he's going to drive through, and he's going to uh, kill those officers, and then he's going to line up a shot against that sniper and against uh, those rocket launcher soldiers. Um, he is then going to drive his tank through such that he uh, bumps the APC so it gets out of his way, so it doesn't drive here and it's not in his way. And he's going to take the fall down this cliff um, a little bit slowly so he doesn't take fall damage. Um, okay. And next up is uh, is the flamethrower section of this level. Uh, this is... Oh, wow. Well, okay. I guess you can't do flamethrower. Uh, I can do flamethrower, just not right here. Oh, it takes too long range for it to be super reliable. So yeah, in this underground section, um, this is a, a, a very scary underground section where there are many an enemy. Um, and what he's going to be doing is he's going to be using the laser rifle stun and the flamethrower stun to get through it, because otherwise this is insanely hard. Um, 
in this case, he's, he just uses the laser rifle to take them out. Um, if the enemy RNG in terms of where they spawn is a little bit better than that, you can actually basically just flamethrow your way through it without stopping um, to keep chain, chain stunning them. However, that wasn't really possible there because the enemy RNG was such that they spawned very far apart. So next up, he's going to just take a small detour into this room to grab more personal ion cannon shots, um, which will make an upcoming uh, boss fight easier. Um, but now he's going to head into said boss fight. Uh, all right, so cutscene time. So that's Mobius. He's the scientist we have to rescue. That's our ex. Uh, she got captured again. And that's the other scientist we were supposed to rescue. Huh? She's bad. Big twist. She, she's Petrova's evil, actually. And that's the short guy we saw earlier, Ravishaw. At least he's taller. At least he's taller. I'm taking the Mobius girl with me. But yeah, no now uh, Petrova is going to detail parts of her understand. evil plan um, whilst we make uh, wisecracking jokes. 20 years before it was popular when Marvel did it. Um, strong and, mindless. and then we are going to fight the boss you fight versus Ravishaw, who has undergone his journey from a short king to a buff steroid king monster. Um, Sure. Uh, and Ravishaw we are going to use the personal ion cannon because it's a very, it's a very Kill broken gun that actually makes command and fight, Sorry, uh, this boss fight's really hard on this difficulty. I'm going to quick save, and if it fails, um, I will just accept that this run will not be valid and just quick save load. I think I got it though. Okay, cool. You so got it. You have to that's do two headshots in order to make it work. And wow. That's, it's easy for the first shot because he's standing still, but once he's moving around, it's not so easy because his hitbox is super unreliable. Even if you hit the headshot, it's going to miss sometimes because his hitbox is not programmed correctly. But I managed oh, to get yeah. it to work. I forgot how hard that fight was on, on this difficulty. Yeah, yeah, you have to... He hit the double uh, double pick shot. The second shot where Ravishaw is running towards you before he grabs you, you have to hit a very precise angle. Um, this, this is a fragment of blue Tiberium, a very good, good, good stuff to DJ there. Yeah, I'm sorry. I completely forgot how difficult that fight was. Um, I, in my head, it was as easy as it is on the other two difficulties, where it's trivially easy. Um, but no, it's not. Wow, I forgot that. Um, so Renegade actually has a hard boss fight for once. Woo. Uh, next up, we have the level All Brains No Brawn, uh, where we have to now escort Mobius, the scientist, out of here. Um, we first pick up some ammo, and then now we're gonna get to this cutscene where he puts on his super suit. The super suit makes him really tanky and really annoying, um, but mostly really tanky on this game. Um, so we don't really have to, this is an escort mission, but we don't, we have to escort him out of the exact same level we just ran through, but backwards. Um, but we don't really need to, like, super care about Mobius, like, being beat up by the enemies. Uh, he's largely gonna be fine. He's pretty tanky on this, like, diff on, on, on this, this, the suit. Oh, sorry. Stuttered. He's pretty tanky with the suit on. Uh, we can shoot him, but it's not a big deal. Uh, we don't do that much damage to him. Fun fact, actually, on this harder difficulty, we do less damage to him than if we did on the, on the easier difficulty. On the easier difficulty is actually really easy to accidentally kill him. Um, but we're gonna, first, we have to get out of here. We have to grab two key cards. Uh, which we're going to do by clearing the rooms and then grabbing them. That's got it. Let's go. So now we have the key cards. We're going to get out of here, and uh, we will see some flamethrower stuns. Uh, this level, we will see a lot of him chain lock, chain stunning people with flamethrowers because it's how you uh, do this section. Um, because it's very hard. Uh, there are no secondaries, I believe, on this level. So, no, there isn't. So, this is actually just as as done in every other category. Um, even the category where you're allowed to teleport places, like, just straight up teleport wherever you want, uh, you don't, you play this normally, actually. So, uh, this is the one commonality in every Renegade speedrun, is this level played exactly the same. Except maybe with varying degrees of difficulty due to enemies shooting in the face or not. So, uh, he's gonna defend Mobius a little bit here. He gets some good RNG on the armor drops, actually. Um, 
so the ar so all the RNG is really reduced on this difficulty, but still in this game, uh, dynamically, it determines what kind of thing you most likely need, whether it's ammo or health or armor, based on what you're lacking. Um, and it is slightly more likely on this difficulty to give those to you. On the easier difficulties, it's basically guaranteed to give those to you. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to head through the section. Uh, that's... wow. Okay, so... This is a very hard section because there's these two acolytes who do a lot of damage and heal themselves and each other, and this rocket soldier, who's as scary as every other rocket soldier in the game. Um, I think Mobius is getting stolen. Yeah, he was, but he's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so he does that section incredibly cleanly, actually. He he flamethrower isolates each of them with the stun and makes sure that they can't kill him and uh, make sure they don't get in his way. And now he's going to head up this elevator with Mobius. He's going to use Mobius as bait for these two stealth soldiers here, uh, who are going to uh, give away their positions to shoot Mobius. Which is really helpful because they're stealth. Um, and next up, we get uh, Rocket Tunnel. Um, this section is really terrifying. Um, because there are, depending on RNG, between four and six rocket launchers who will be shooting at you the entire time and one sniper. Um, and all of them can one-shot you. And DJ makes it look, like, incredibly clean and easy. Um... It's easier to YOLO it, I've found out. Yeah, I guess it's it's easier to go that section, like, in insanely fast and just hope they don't, and, like, shoot them before they get to you as opposed to, like, actually fighting it. Um, but I am running out of, like, times to say, hey, this section's really, really hard. Because, and I, I'm telling you the truth, these sections are genuinely terrifyingly hard. And DJ is just, like, acing them. Um, next up, he's gonna go into this room. Uh, he's gonna use Mobius to bait out the enemies. And then he's gonna pick up these chain, two laser chain guns. Again, his, anim his ammo got reset last level. And so he's actually very low on ammo this entire time. And he can't really do great ammo, ammo conservation besides just hitting headshots. Because all these en enemies were in, a, were in the late game. These enemies are all really difficult. So he has to actually just make sure he picks up ammo where he gets it. He's going to pick up the laser chain gun, which is the next... Which is the laser chain gun. So really strong weapon. And next up, we get Garage. Um, in every category, this section is a hallmark of FPS difficulty. Uh, in the hardest FPS difficulty category, this level, this section is no exception. Um, basically, this is where a garage where there are a lot of turrets and a lot of dudes. Um, Thinking about these spawns here, they're quite easy to line up. Yeah, he got really good spawns here in terms of the enemies uh, being baited to shoot Mobius and not him. Because if enough enemies look at him, they will shoot him and they will kill him, I must emphasize. Um, so he got both good spawns in terms of them shooting Mobius and good spawns in terms of them lining up for his gun. Um, yeah, so next up, he has to just kill these turrets as he gets out. They die fairly easily to just him rocketing them to death. And then he's going to pick up an armor upgrade, which again buffs his armor for the rest of the game, which is very helpful. And then now, uh, we're going to get to the surface. Uh, the surface is where we will just kill some guys in our way and then get out of, get out of here. Get out of Dodge. Uh, like there's moves. a... Alright, okay. there is a, yeah, there's an invisible stealth tank here, um, depending, that was the worst rocket hitbox I've ever seen, um, there are some oh, officers yeah. in front of the stealth tank blocking the shots there, uh, oh, okay, they yeah. blended in with the red and black, um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of not officers here, uh, they kind of decide whether they want to shoot you, Mobius, or actually you'll get friends who spawn here to escort you out, uh, they kind of just pick which one they want to shoot, um, they also drop quite a bit of ammo, which is very nice in the section. And now we're going to get on to helicopter, say hi to Gunner, and get out of here. And that is Evolution of Evil. Um, or sorry, that's all brains number one. He already did Evolution of Evil. Uh, they're the same level in terms of the level layout, so it's um, pretty complicated. Um, all right, next up, tomorrow's technology today, the second last level. So this level has three big components to it. Um, it is the second most involved level in terms of, like, secondary objective difficulty, uh, where there are a lot of secondary objectives of you just should blow up stuff. Because you are now assaulting the main Nod base. 
Uh, for those of you who have played the original Command & Conquer, this is you as the commando in the final level of the original Command & Conquer. Um, at, at the GDI mission in Sarajevo. Um, now, last I checked, Sarajevo, Sarajevo wasn't like super sandy, but I could also just be stupid. Um, and so now he's gonna open this up by shooting some turrets and a SAM site, uh, and then kill a rock soldier on top. Uh, his first secondary will be to blow up this hand of Nod's barracks in front of him. Um, I don't know which version of the barracks kill he's going to do, actually. He is going to do the cool barracks kill. Okay, kill. Alright, so this is called Uke Skip. Um, it was found by the runner named Uke. Um, I think they warmed up the repairs. The tank was shooting. Ah, unlucky. I might still be able to get it, but it's strict. Yeah, okay, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Okay, you can so, explain what that was. Yeah, so that that's Uke Skip. Um, Uke Skip. So normally when you kill buildings, right, we go down to their master control terminal, their central point, and we shoot them in the master control terminal, blow it up, and that kills the building. Um, Uke Skip is a series of tricks found by the runner named Uke of basically pixel perfect lineups on certain parts of their geometry that allow you to shoot through them. Um, that is that is the Uke Skip lineup for the head of Nod. Uh, you can do that on every head of Nod in the single player, um, but that's the main one where it saves quite a bit of time. Um, importantly though, in this level, the enemy has a construction yard. And what the construction yard is, is it repairs buildings. So, you actually, if you're, whenever you're fighting a building, um, sorry, repairs buildings, but importantly, it's repairs take a time, second to warm up. So whenever you're trying to kill a building fast, you have to, um, you have to kill them fast enough before the repairs warm up, and you, it actually becomes unkillable until you work it. Uh, so, you skip to do it for that building, we have to use the personal iron cannon, the highest DPS gun in the game, to make sure we kill it in time. Um, Alright, next up we come to the refinery, um, where uh, our next objective is to kill this refinery. Uh, there's This is a very scary section in terms of there being a lot of rocket soldiers who spawn. It's a 50-50 RNG between whether they spawn as rocket soldiers or as uh, normal grunts. Um, he's going to now walk his way into the refinery. He has a key card he has to grab here. Uh, there is an enemy around that corner, which he um, manages to kill with a C4 explosive. And then he's going to uh, uke skip line up this refinery. Which... You have to... I'm getting it. Tough to line up. It's hard to. There's no good visual reference, so I just have to get a feel for it. There you go. Let's go. All right. So yeah, like like um like I said when introducing the Uke Skip lineups, the Uke Skip lineups are insanely precise. Um, and they also most of the lineups for them depend on your aspect ratio. Um, so it's even hard for like runners to share tricks about which lineup to do because like for instance I run on 16 by 9 and uh DJ runs on 4 by 3, so. Uh, the various lineups are very hard. So he just killed that refinery without going down to its master control terminal, which actually requires a key card to access that he didn't grab. So he skips grabbing that key card. That's a very big time save. Um, through that lineup. He's now going to open this gate so he can drive his tank through. Um, those tricks, yeah, those tricks are very, are the, uh, most major glitch besides the walk left glitch we saw in Deadly Reunion, actually. Um, I... You just saw DJ get out of his tank there to reorient his tank turret quickly. Mm, uh, I was, sure. <clears throat> I did that to change my weapon. That was, I want to be in oh, my laser okay. tank gun here. If I need to okay. get out quickly. Yeah. Okay. Well, it also had that effect. Um, but yeah, he did it also to change his weapon. So he, if he has to go do on a ground fight, he has the correct weapon. Next up, he's going to kill this obelisk. This is actually an objective in the level besides tertiary, but it will kill him. If he but yeah, now he has the mammoth tank. Uh, this tank is actually slower driving than walking on foot is, but it is very tanky, uh, which is important because the section is insanely hard. Uh, it is um, regular grunts and rocket soldiers uh, spawn at infinitum, um, and it is his job to kill them before they, they mess with him. Uh, the mammoth tank also notably, once its armor is gone, once you're down to its health, it will heal slowly over time. So it isn't quite the worst thing ever to 
to have to uh, take damage here as long as you don't actually die. Um, but he's going to shoot these guys. Uh, he gets the two Sam sites, which are also objectives. And he's going to open the gate for his tank here. Um, his tank is necessary to do an aspect of this next part of the level fast. Um, so he can't actually really use it right now, but he has to put it here for future reference. Um, all right, so now he's going to go into some, uh, the uh, alien section, um, where there's an alien spaceship here. It's a reference to future Command and Conquer games. And he's, there's a lot of rocket soldiers around. So there's four rocket soldiers guaranteed to spawn above him. And then there are four grunts on the ground who are 50-50 either being like a, a grunt with a normal gun or a grunt with a rocket launcher. So it's uh, very important that he plays this carefully. Both with the rockets above him can kill him very easily and the rockets uh, on the ground can kill him very easily. Though um, the rockets above him are guaranteed to the rest of the card, I suppose. So, in that case, of the guys on the ground, three were normal dudes with guns, one was a rocket soldier, uh, that last guy that we killed. And next up, we are going to head into the final part of the Nod base. Uh, we're going to come back here later, uh, because we have to kill parts of it that we can't kill efficiently. Um, with... Yeah. We have to kill parts of it that we can't kill efficiently. Um, but, so, for to do that, what we have to do is we have to open the gate for our armor there, and we're actually going to walk back immediately. Um, now, that is not intended the way you are supposed to complete this level. The way you're supposed to complete this level is actually basically open the gates all the way through, and then drive your tank all the way through here. But, notably, he didn't open this gate in front of his tank. So how will he ever open his gate through this tank? Um, the answer is you can just clip through that and kill it, <laughs> and, get the, and get the switch for the gate. Um, that was a trick found by a runner named Stefan1192. Um, and is uh, very helpful in this category, in because uh, it allows you to open the to, it allows you to not have to walk through this section before you um, not have to walk through this section before you uh, open the gate. Um, so next up, he's gonna make sure he kills all the all the enemies on foot here, um, so they can't kill his tank. Um, there's quite a few snipers and rocket soldiers. Um, there's gonna be a helicopter here. However, uh, you can just—if the helicopter actually ever messes with you—you can't—you can't just shoot it down with your tank, unless it goes up and down. It's juking me real hard right it's now. It's actually juking him. There you um, go. There we go. And that, of all the shots that hit, that was the one that hit. All right. So now he's gonna uh, go through here with his tank. Um, he has to kill that power plant and communication center, but the construction yard uh, repairs are actually too much. For him to kill it right now, so he has to drive his tank through. He's gonna use to kill the construction yard, as well as, uh, as well as these uh, silos, which are objective to get. So he can kill that helicopter and kill some of these rock soldiers who are kind of hanging out. There is a tank directly in front of him, the stealth tank that he kills, um, and then there are these stealth soldiers that he also is gonna kill. Um, so the reason you want the mam tank here is you can kill the construction yard on foot very easily. In fact, that's what is done in every other category in this game. Um, however, killing the uh, silos, silos um, in every other Command and Conquer game are like really weak buildings that are really easy to kill. And in uh, this game, they kind of to mostly talk to you as a player, I believe, just made them like the tankiest building in the game. And that they don't have a master control terminal either, which is normally how you blow up buildings, either through directly or through like a youth skip uh, with the, um, but those don't have master control with criminal so you just have to kill them with, like shooting them repeatedly and so we have to we have the mammoth tank here which is the strongest tank in the game to actually be able to kill them otherwise it would take like years to kill them all right so next they don't up, usually drop a bunch of rocket soldiers on me like this but when they do i have to get out to make sure i can kill them and so they shoot at me instead of the tank because i need the tank alive Priority one. I've never actually seen rocket soldiers. So I think it's only on soldier and uh, commando difficulty. Okay. Even when I about 100 percent Um, but yeah, he's gonna kill these rocket soldiers around. He's also gonna kill this helipad. Um, and generally speaking, that is all the secondary objectives here. He just kind of needs the tank to kill all the buildings really efficiently. Um, these rocks here make the geometry rather cumbersome to drive around, but it all fits just 
Um, he's not going to grab that Humvee there, because even though Humvee is faster, he has to actually still go back and kill the uh, command center and the construction yard. Or not the construction yard, sorry, the power plant. So, while we uh, have the uh, nanny slowly grabbing. DJ, uh, what's your personal favorite gun in this game? Uh, I've always liked the Volt when I was younger. I don't think that's really changed. My favorite thing was when, uh, so there's the alien spaceship in the, uh, the alien spaceship in that we walked past. Uh, yeah. The Volt spawns there, and I was really peeved that that was all I got. Because <laughs> I, I didn't understand how broken the vault was at the time. Alright, so we're gonna drive the mammoth through here. Um, we're gonna drive it back. So now we have to pick up uh, an ion cannon beacon, a super weapon beacon, uh, to end the level. There are two invisible stealth tanks here that are gonna definitely scare DJ. Oh no, we pre fired where one of them is. Oh no, we pre fired the other second spot. Wow, that was really good prediction. Yeah, it's completely random every time. Except it's, it's so all in the random. same spot. Yeah, it's it's it's. <laughs> He's gonna grab another arm upgrade, and that is the level as it ends. And that is five stars on tomorrow's technology today, which is a very hard level to run in 100%. By the way, the the uke skips there are not easy to like hit in the demanding setting there. Actually, um, next up is the final level of the game, stopping on holy ground. Uh, this level has uh, no secondaries in it. It is just primaries, uh, but this level is so hard as a shooter level that in the load screen it reminds you that quick saving exists because it's like this level is hard. Um, however, we can't quick save because so far we have a valid 100% run. Um, we have a valid 100% run on ridiculous pace, I might add. Um, yeah, it's currently 10 minutes ahead of current record. Yeah, we are we are 10 minutes ahead of the world record right now um, for, for everyone in chat. Um, this is level- that's not to say we have it yet. You can still lose the validity of your 100% run very easily by loading any save, and this level is so ins insanely easy to mess up on. Um, so we're gonna get the great best line in Command and Conquer, Renegade. You probably a bit quiet. Okay, um, it's probably a bit- yeah, it's probably quiet, I'm not sure, I don't have the game audio very high. Uh, you so can summarize it though, because I don't think they are. Um, because Kane there, the main villain of the entire Command and Conquer franchise, uh, asks us, why is progress so slow? Um, because, yeah, he, he, he says, progress seems to be slowing, are you having difficulties? Uh, and then you respond, traffic. Um, and to be honest, I always found that line a little bit annoying when I'm on, when I'm on like record pace. Like, bro, shut up, Kane. You're getting styled on. All right, next up is Visceroid Room. Uh, he has to grab a key card here. Uh, he grabs Flamethrower here, which is a, actually a strat we discussed immediately before this run. Um, yeah, so uh, Visceroids have the key card there. They're the mutants. Uh, they have kind of bad RNG in terms of how they might be walking. Um, Um, and so now he's gonna walk through this section, and now we get Templar fight. Alright, this is the hardest FPS fight in the entire game. Uh, I'm gonna relatively not complicate on it because it's very, don't want to distract DJ. Uh, but basically, there are a lot of these Templars. They're one of the hardest enemies in the game, and they spawn to about 40 of them. And you have to just fight them out. Expect him to go up the ramp. There we go. Yeah. Alright, so he's gonna be camping them because that is the best way to play this fight on this difficulty. Uh, this fight is insanely difficult both casually and in the speedrun. Um, I took it's not super hard once you know how to just take cover with high ground cover up here. But if you try to do it like yeah. the intentional way on low ground, it's basically impossible. Yeah. Do, so the the at the near the capsules where they spawn, there's actually a button that disables one half of the future spawns. Um, going for that button on this difficulty is suicide. Um, 
and that is the intended way to play this level. So if you play this level casually, you will probably try to do that, and you will probably die repeatedly. It is because there will instantly be about 10 Templars surrounding you. Uh, their gun is the Tiberium Auto Rifle. It basically is a automatic rocket launcher and it heals other Templars. So they will shoot each other to heal each other and they can also accidentally shoot themselves through a uh, aim punch, basically. I don't know. I have... Did you get them? I have never seen that fight done that cleanly. Like, holy crap, chat. Uh, I'm just in awe of DJ right now, man. All right, so next up, we're gonna go into the most the most understandable part of Renegade, uh, the Tiberium zombie crypt for three seconds. Um, we're gonna just kind of walk through it. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't know why this exists in the game, to be honest. It is never mentioned throughout the rest of Command and Conquer ever. Um, I think they just wanted to have a small zombie section. I, I don't know why. Intruder they also have guns on their models, but they're not using them. Alright, so next up we get to Corkscrew. Um, Corkscrew is very hard. It's not quite as hard as Templar Fight. But it's, it's still insanely hard. Uh, this time, instead of Templars, we have stealthed enemies. Uh, with laser rifles. Uh, we, uh, he, DJ is gonna take this quite slowly, in the sense that he is going to peek these when he wants to peek them. So that he doesn't expose himself. They are stealth, so I have to wait until they shoot me to know where they are, which is risky because you don't have very much health. Yeah, all these enemies careful. are invisible by default, so he has to bait them into revealing themselves. Um, and somewhat have their spawn points in a, like, understand where their spawn points generally are. Um, to get to, uh, that. Um, it's very common that the enemies will collect on this ramp he's shooting them at. Um, I coined the term that getting them all lined up like that is called the protagonist lineup. Um, he actually gets a pretty good health drop in terms of the RNG there to heal him. Notably, he has to actually make sure he picks up the drops because uh, they despawn very quickly on this difficulty. They actually don't despawn up here on the ramp. Oh, wow. Fun fact. I didn't know that. Yeah. Is that the always spawn in Commando, is it? What? Is that the oil spot commander where that occurs? Uh, maybe? I don't know. I've never seen that before. I've never kept a um, strike. I just know what that beast don't. Alright, next up is the final boss fight. He's gonna kill these enemies here who are going to heal the final boss ahead of time. Um, and then he's gonna pull out his personal ion cannon. Uh, make sure he's topped up of an ammo. And he is going to go for, uh, the fast version of this fight. Where he's going to personal ion cannon handshot the final boss, which will all but kill her. She Mostly. also has five or six stealth soldiers who are will spawn with her. Uh, DJ is immediately going to be running probably to the corner, I'm guessing. As this cutscene plays to um, get out of the way and go for the headshot lineup, he gets it. Um, and then he's going to finish it off by headshotting the final boss to death. That is the final boss. That headshot is not trivial. Um, and then he gets actually really good enemy RNG in terms of them all lining up for his flamethrower. Making um, sure it's clear, because it, this is the only part in the game where you can die during a cutscene because the enemies are not frozen in place, they can still shoot you, so. Yeah, many runs are lost due to uh, you dying in this cutscene, yeah, to enemies shooting them. Uh, it, it's it's so tilting. Um, but yeah, he gets it, and now we rescue Sydney, and now we are on to the very final section of the game, where we have, uh, the nuclear missile is gonna blow up inside the space and we need to get out of there. Um, to explain what I'm about to do, I'm not gonna actually bring Sydney out. Uh, I want to clear the room first before I bring her out. But you can go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in faster categories, uh, you're not so concerned with Sydney taking too much damage here. She can die. She's very low health, but you can usually kill the enemies fast enough to deal with her. Uh, but on this category, she is just as low health. Enemies do more damage. And uh, you are low enough health such that you can't really jump in front of bullets for her like you can in other categories. So, uh, DJ is going to walk into this room first and fully clear it out. Sydney doesn't have the key card to open the door to get to the next room, actually. You have to open them for her. Um, and so that is what he did. He just walked through the room, made sure all the enemies were gone. There are at least three that spawned in this room before. Um, there are at least three that spawned in this room. Now we get to elevators in the nuclear missile silo. Um, Sydney didn't open the- go through the door in time there. That's intentional. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that makes lots of sense. Uh, so here he's gonna kill these, uh, stealth soldiers who, uh, Sydney, uh, 
who would otherwise be shooting Sydney. Um, he's going to cut up through these elevators and make sure he kills all these stealth block ends. Uh, he has the flamethrower out because it is a stunning weapon. So they can't shoot Sydney. They, she is very low HP. She will die very easily. He's going to do the hardest trick in Renegade, just looking up to make sure to kill that guy because it's very easy to forget him. And he will kill Sydney. And uh, ready on time to whoever is doing the timing. Once the game shows a complete screen, it's time. Yeah, I'll... I'll... Uh, I can't call because I'm on a one second time. delay. Fine. <sighs> and that's a valid run. And I <laughs> believe... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is the Command & Conquer Renegade 100% world record. Yes, sir. Um, to be fair, I'm the only one in the category, and it's been improving by 10 minutes each time, basically. One the last record... The the last record that was fully valid was like around 150 like 155 or something in game time and i have the auto splitter up right now with in game time i'm not sure what the real time was on stream 147 16. in game uh, time it's 144 51. a 144 51 uh congratulations <laughs> to dj fed everybody um holy crap man he played other than getting like he, his time loss was for getting one objective yeah. and getting blue <laughs> held, which is a one in one thousand bug that has nothing to do with his fault. He otherwise aced this category in an insanely impressive way. This category is so hard. I kid you not. He made that look easy, but all of those enemies he was fighting will tend to win the one v one versus you, and he was completely dominating them. It's all about balance in uh, how fast you go, but also slowing down to make sure you don't overwhelm yourself with how many enemies are looking at you at once. Um, there's still a balance to be found. I'm sure there's still a lot of YOLO potential to just run through things that you can still take even with a low HP. Um, but yeah, there you have it. That's Renegade. At least follow 100%. D follow DJ Fed. <laughs> follow DJ Fed on Twitch, guys. Oh, man, he's, he's nuts. He... Like... He's 43 minutes underestimate because he's, like, just ridiculously cracked. I mean, um, to be fair, when I submitted this category, my PB was, like, 2 hours and 10 minutes or something. Um, but I've been improving a lot since then, so yeah. like, there's a lot of more margin for error because I've, I've just been grinding this category a lot the past month. Are so. we so far ahead of estimate that there is time to be killed? Yeah, there is. No, I hope that's not too much of a problem, though. Teleport percent, uwu? Uh, no. That's, no. I'm not doing okay. I don't have any practice okay. on that. I've spent like a month and a half. Okay. Um, I guess I'm not sure if anyone here is interested in like playing this game online. This game still has an online community that plays this game. Um, but it requires like a community patch called Tabarium Technologies. If anyone is interested, you can get this game on Origin, then download the community patch, Tabarium Technologies. And then if you go into internet and uh, click the GameSpy servers, what's online isn't super reliable. If you want to go on the GameSpy, if you are on a Tabarium Technologies, you can play some online matches. There's still some community servers being hosted. Um, of course, their time of day, depending um, on whether or not there's activity, some times of day, there's just no one online. But if anyone wants to play this game, you can um, on online. Just thought I'd give that a quick shout out. Like yeah. it's been 21 years since this game came out and still gets activity, which is pretty nice. It's pretty cool. And this game, I'll plug that speedrun. This game has a variety of speedrun categories. Yeah, um, later in this event, you'll see any percent by me uh, with Fed on commentary. Um, where any percent is very much more aligned towards uh, a couple more funny glitches, as well as um, generally uh, the enemies who like to shoot at us. Uh, we don't really care about them so much in that category. We uh, tend to uh, eat bullets for breakfast. Um, and so I'll be running that on Tuesday, not 46 hours from now, basically at the exa exact same time this run started. Um, and that uh i highly recommend getting into the speeder on this game um it has any percent is a great category there's the soldier percent category which is any percent but ran on the difficulty in the the middle difficulty the medium difficulty uh there is teleport percent which involves the wacky teleport glitch which oh is yeah a i should probably show that off line so we have time yeah so uh hey uh dj out of curiosity uh what's the fastest uh you can beat armored assault in oh yeah I, yeah yeah uh, let's see so, 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 uh, chat, I don't wanna, at least just demonstrate what it is first. So let's go into like the rest of your picture. Yeah, yeah, or the tutorial you can also teleport in. Doesn't really matter. So if you open the pause menu, um, there is a map. Um, it 
it shows more of the map the more you progress through the level. But if you hold control and click, you teleport to a random area. Well, not the random area. The, the area you click on the map, that's where you teleport to. Um, so there's a whole category dedicated to this feature of the game where you just teleport around the map and complete objectives that way. Um, as you can imagine, that's very broken. And some levels you can complete extremely, extremely quickly. So let's go into Armor's Assault. Let's load it up. Uh, yeah. So this took him, reminder, this took him like about 15, 20 minutes as, as a level. Um, uh, yeah, so... I don't remember exactly where you have to click, but it's around there. A little bit down. Yeah. Boom. Mission 3 finished. <laughs> You just beat mission three in three seconds with the teleport glitch, and you can beat that mission frame perfectly. Yeah, you, like you can pause, pause buffer during the loading screen, and then just like go to the map and click on the exact spot where the finish trigger is, and then finish the mission in like one frame. So, so yeah, there, that's there, what that category there, is. Renegade has a whole host of great categories, from the teleporting category to the more normal any percent to the soldier percent, which is a nice balance between the fastness of any percent and the uh and more shooter skills and then there's the for the psychos in the community um <laughs> like my beloved dj here there's a hundred percent it's true i am a, i'm a bit weird like that <sighs> that was a good run though but i don't Insane, think there's anything else for me to show off other than like i could show some more stuff off sure but most of that's gonna be in any percent anyway which i want to save for no toe to go through um in two days from now so i think i'll just end it here Thank you guys for watching. This is a fun run. Thanks, Pronoto, for commentating for me. It helped me focus a lot more. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I, I, I knew how difficult this category was, so I decided, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to talk a lot so that you don't have to. Awesome. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. It was fun. Thank you so much, chat. Bye. Bye-bye.